Welcome to Beyond Sunday, the podcast where we're helping you take your faith beyond Sunday and into your everyday life. We do that by taking the Sunday morning sermon from Trinity New Life Church and talking about how we can apply that to our Monday through Saturday. And normally, myself, Chael Branda, the executive director of Trinity New Life Church, is joined by my incredible co-host, Clayton Bell, the lead pastor here at Trinity New Life. However, Clayton's been a little bit under the weather recently, and we're going to get to that in a very short bit here. So I am joined by the incredible stand in Colin Hoke. Hey, Colin, how you what doing? What is going on? Glad I would say, hey, here. buddy. <laughs> there's, there's nightmares there. <laughs> and then we will get to that. <laughs> uh, Colin Sears is the student director here at Trinity New Life Church. And this last Sunday, you came in and helped us kick off 2020 in a brand new sermon series called Amazing mm-hmm. Grace with our very first sermon. Yeah. How did it feel to start off the year? Uh, great. It felt It felt as good as it possibly could have. So for those of you who had not had the opportunity to be in service on Sunday and haven't maybe caught on to the podcast yet, first, you need to go listen to the mm-hmm. message. It'll be That'd very be helpful. helpful for some of these things. But we did have a very last minute... Um, Switch, what are they called in? What, yeah, what's uh, it called in wrestling? Like when they like hit the sub, mat? Substitution? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Like I've only ever seen it on these like... Uh, uh, tap out. A tap when, out. When you, when you Do tap they tap out? out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, tap, well, maybe... No, no. Tap out is when you... I'm the wrong person to be asking I'm these. Prob- like, I, I'm not any better, um, so... Yeah, we'll go with we'll any go with tap of those out. things. Uh, we got on Saturday... I don't know, it was probably about 6 o'clock on Saturday, I started getting messages uh, from Pastor Clayton saying, hey, I'm just not feeling the best. I'm not doing, you know, too hot, kind of been feeling it all day long. Mm -hmm. Not sure what that means. And there's a handful of things on a Sunday morning that either he or I do. So it was like, hey, all of the things that you or I do, how about you just do tomorrow? And I was like, (laughs) okay, well, that's easy enough. I can, I'll take these things on. I told him, I was like, I'll be there early to help you know, get our morning started and everything and um, the just come in when you feel better kind of a kind of thing. Okay, sounds great. And I'm like praying for you, you know, like I really hope and there's been obviously the flu has just been going around mm-hmm. TNLC for everybody a little everybody was everybody sick. has been not feeling well and so we were uh, not it wasn't a huge surprise that somebody on our staff got sick. It was just kind of I was like, oh man, I'm like all right, well he's gonna get some rest. He's gonna be fine. He's gonna be awesome. Like I think so I sat back down at the dining room table and I said, hey guys, we, we had just finished dinner and we were, the kids were talking and stuff. And I said, hey, Pastor Clayton's not feeling well. Be praying for him that he feels better. And my husband <laughs> looked at me and goes, so what's the backup plan? And I was like, what backup plan? And he's like, what if he really is sick? And I was like, right. I mean, we've had loose conversations about this. Like it's not the, something the, that the we're break, like. Break glass in case of emergency. Right. We're not. We are incredibly blessed to not be in a situation where if he's going to, if Pastor Clayton's going to be out, we're in a real heap right. of trouble. Yeah, he's yeah. covering so much. We're mm-hmm. going to have to call in all these people and go we'll figure out, like, we're not at that place mm-hmm. um, as a church. So we, again, loose conversations about, hey, this would happen or that could happen. And so it's like, I just shared some of the stuff with Mike and he's like, okay. And I was like, I really don't think, I really was like, he didn't seem dire in our right. in our conversation i told him i said w- in the morning we'll talk like i didn't say hey we'll figure out what's happening with the message i was like, I'm like we'll talk about everything else we need to adjust if you're not still not feeling well later type of thing and he was like yeah pastor claim was like yeah that's fine so then we just were like sitting around the table and my my phone rang and it was kelly bell and, <laughs> and you shared yesterday the like uh which hail branda calls you i was like kelly bell calls me after i've talked to clayton and clayton's already told me he's sick i literally answered the phone and went so how bad is he really yeah yeah like, what, was he how, not telling me? what was he not telling me in, in my conversations and she laughed and she was like well i she's like it's the fever. She's like, it spikes, you know, and that, it's just whenever it spikes is when I get worried about like, I don't know that you should be going anywhere and doing anything right now. I was yeah. like, okay. She's like, so do you have a backup plan? I was like, well, this is what I was thinking. I shared some things through with her and she was like, yeah, why don't you go ahead? She's like, I'm not, she's like, I don't, th- I'm not going to tell him I'm telling you to make the call. I'm just going to say, go ahead, start making all that, that <laughs> stuff. I was like, yeah, let me start working on all this stuff. And so then I got on the phone with you. I sent some text message out to our lead team. I mm. really started working through all of the things. And this is the, the fun part. And one of the things I really do enjoy about my job is 
the 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 areas of coaching that I get to get into. So mm-hmm. like I got to work with you through the message, like mm-hmm. coach through like where this was. Um, we actually had somebody. Uh, Chris Monte did our tithe yesterday and he was actually stepping in kind of last minute. So it was like, I was also working with him on Saturday night through some of that stuff. But then like, well, he was know, stepping in last minute on tithe and, and well, and producer. Right. So, but we didn't know that when we talked on Saturday night. So right. like Saturday night, like when I sent him that email, we, I didn't know that we actually, our producer was out sick also with the flu and it was like everybody everybody's still sick and so it was just all of those things on my end and um you got the the phone call and i got the phone call and so i called so next time like anytime after 7 p.m i'm just not gonna pick on a up saturday a phone night call <laughs> chill i mean send like, to voicemail but, uh <laughs> not sure about that but i i did i called you and gave you a couple options mm-hmm. and one of those being hey this is where we're going in to the sermon series right this is the start of prayer and fasting week, kind of what our hopes and goals and things of that were. And I said, like, read through this and let me know. Mm-hmm. So you sat down and read through it. Yeah. And met Clayton said, what were your first thoughts when you were reading through it? Uh, my first thoughts were, because uh, the options you gave me were you can you can preach through Clayton's message, message. I can send you the notes and you can just adapt it and, and kind of make it your own. Um, or you can you can look back through a refresh sermon that you've done and maybe adapt something like that or mm-hmm. you know so just so that those were kind of the the two options and so I was I was I was reading through Pastor Clayton's notes. I think it was just kind of like a b- because of the nature of the sermon, mm-hmm. it was just kind of like a oh yeah yeah, yeah no I, I can do this like I don't there I do not need to have a a like a, a, a super, uh, like, I don't need to be able to see into Clayton's mind necessarily for this mm-hmm. one because of the nature. It is, it's a little bit more of a foundations message. It's right. kind of going back to the beginning. So, um, so I was reading it and I was just like, I, I think the bet, the way to go is just stick with the, keep it with the sermon series, mm-hmm. go with this one. So, which is what I was really hoping you were going to say, right. but you also, when you're making that phone call, you don't want to be like, Hey you have to buddy. Do the, yeah, yeah. And go ahead and just figure out all of Clayton's right. thoughts in this moment. Can you just do that? It was like, okay, here are your options. Mm-hmm. Let's see what I want you to read through this, read them all, think through it. Cause you see what you can do. And it was one of those. Exactly. It was a very, it was an incredible foundational message. Just a great start for the year, knowing the topics, knowing how one, well, one, knowing how you teach. I knew that it would be something that you would be comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, even when Kelly called and was like, she's like, Clayton's muttering things about grace and mercy and like all these <laughs> thoughts. And she's like, he says it's an easy message. And I was like, well, do you want to preach it? She's like, nope. And I was like, okay, well, I was like, let's, let's, let's all like, well, then I'm yeah. going to give Colin, uh, call Colin and, um, I, you know, I told you on the photo, I was like, well, it's either you or me. Right. And I was like, so. And I have all of the other things that right. are going on it on was, Sundays. It was definitely a Sunday where I was, uh, Sunday. not only was I Sunday manager, uh-huh. but Carly was already point guard. Mm-hmm. Casey and Kristen Sheffield were already had pastoral care meetings all day mm-hmm. long. So like the numbers kept getting fewer, like without even There's blinking, no like options. our options were getting fewer and fewer. I was like, so rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> like, what do you want to do? And, but I did. I think that like. Because of the the nature of the message, you were just very easy. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a this is a message Colin can adapt mm-hmm. for Colin and make this like something. So yeah. after you decided to do his sermon, you sat down with his notes, and I did not send you the editable <laughs> editable file. So nope, I was like, just, I got the PDF. I got the PDF. And I was but like, well, but that was good. That was good right. because that forced me to to retype. So what, what I was, what I did end up taking from his message, mm-hmm. I, it caused me to retype, which kind of solidified things. And so that actually, I think helped the process Good. overall, overall. Total intentional. Yeah, totally, totally intentional. Well done. Well done. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, uh, you, you also write your notes differently from the way Clayton does. Clayton yeah. is, is a little bit more bullet points, overviews for sections. Right. He can fill in space very, uh, Pastor Clayton did that very easily. You are a little bit more of a transcriber. Mm-hmm. So I do think that that just helps you kind of give some of the language to it. But what would, what do you think the easiest part of taking his notes, of preaching somebody else's message, what do you think mm-hmm. the easiest parts of that were? Uh, I, I think the easiest, well, on the one hand, 
I have I've heard Pastor Clayton preach before, obviously, right. and I've seen his notes, and so I I I went in understanding kind of the di- like the dynamic between him and his notes, mm-hmm. uh, and so that kind of helped me as I was thinking. It, it helped me re- as I was reading through, like, what does this line mean? Oh, okay, no, I I think like I was able to like mm-hmm. almost pull on some past experience of kind of like of that to know like oh th- this is the direction he's going like right. it's not it's right. not fully laid out but I I get the idea of it um, but I mean the easiest part was I think just um, it wasn't difficult to understand the the overall direction of the message mm-hmm. I mean it was it was clear enough in the notes to understand okay this is this is where he's going this is what he's trying to get at because again it's like w- way back when I preached on love. Mm-hmm. It was like, like Clayton was like, Hey, I need you to preach on love. I was like, any direction? He's like, yeah, love. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, okay. You know? <laughs> um, so it, it, grace is kind of one of those things, grace and mercy, but there was enough of a direction where we, I was able to kind of lean in and say, okay, I, I get, this is kind of how we want to do this. When to go back to the foundations, mm-hmm. just really understand just how amazing, like, what does it mean that mm-hmm. like grace, like is grace actually as amazing as John Newton, you know, says in his song. Um, you know, so it, that was, that was pretty easy to understand kind of the overall direction of it, I think. Yeah. What do, we, what do you think the hardest part of it was? I think the hardest part was taking what I did understand mm-hmm. and then fleshing it out enough to actually then have a full sermon that is in me or that's coming mm-hmm. from me, um, rather than just, you know, I mean, cause I, you kind of have a handful of like, okay, I get this, I get this, I get this, I get this. Mm -hmm. But because all of that sermon was coming from his mind and not mine, there were still a lot of, um, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, like not link. So a lot really, really my job in for that was simply to connect, connect Mm -hmm. all of those different thoughts and and connect all those links. So that's really what I was doing Saturday night was I was like, I sat down I was like, okay, let's figure this out. Let's write down what makes sense to me, where it, Mm -hmm. where it's going. And then now how do I fill the links that fill those blanks in as I, you know, right. I think that that's one of the, um, Oh, I, whenever we coach speakers and we really do have a, have a really great Mm -hmm. teaching kind of team that we've begun to, to really work with. I think that there is, Something really incredible about the coaching that Pastor Clayton can do with mm-hmm. his speakers to know that we all have a very similar voice when we preach. And, and, and it's like I, I said this I don't know, probably in one of our I think one of our wins and our fives notes of like it. It was a message for that Colin, like it felt like a Colin message, mm-hmm. but it had the TNLC voice. Yeah. So while Clayton really wrote the majority of the message and you preached it, it had this it had this feel of TNLC. Right. And I think that we have a we just have really seen that with a lot of our 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 internal you know preachers yeah. of you know whether it's Kelly or David or Mason, um, you get up there and there is just this feel of oh this is a TNLC message right. this works for TNLC they say and I thought that that was one of the like I think yeah there's enough distinction in the messages and the speakers that it doesn't sound like we're drones right it sounds like right it's, yeah. it, absolutely we're not again it, Clayton never says oh you have to say things this mm-hmm. way or you have to have this in here or this needs to go in here but the, the way that he really coaches so right. incredibly is to say, Hey, this area right here, mm-hmm. you know, look at, and he says this pretty frequently. And you know, he's like, he's like, what are you trying to get to here? Mm-hmm. He's like, because is this, you know, are we making disciples through this? You know, obviously mm-hmm. you know, is Jesus the hero? Mm-hmm. Like, is, are we bringing this back? And as, as he's done that, it, it, I, I felt like, I teased you. I think it was after first. I was like, man, I'm going to have Clayton write all your messages for you. I was like, that was really good. I was like, good job, Colin. Not because you're not a bad writer, but because you were able to take something and deliver it so well. Right. Like, it was just like, hey, there's... If this is... Yeah, I, like, mean, I mean, might as well. Honestly, I wouldn't mind that either because I've got messages i got to write for my ease ministry. So, hey. like, so all right, there you go. Pastor Clayton, you are writing my, my uh, Sunday morning messages from now on. <laughs> We're gonna get back to our desk, and we're both have like, please see me. <laughs> Never mind, just kidding. But no, I do think that it was just you did just a really great job. Now, again, this idea of grace and mercy was a great way for us to start. What we are now into as um, if you're listening to this on when we release the podcast, it's Tuesday, so we're day two of our prayer mm-hmm. and fasting week. We have three more days for anyone with engaged this week. 
talking about this idea of grace mm-hmm. is really what you were able to do. And I, I teased you when we started the podcast. I was like, I'm going to ask you, I guess I can't ask you what you leave out of the message because right. you really put everything you <laughs> had, all that, that was in there. Yeah, <laughs> everything you had into that message. But what were some of the highlights? Like when we're talking about grace and we're talking about mercy, what are some of the highlights or the moments that you really want people to grasp as they're going through their week from mm-hmm. those two concepts? I think, well, uh, as far as both of those are concerned, I think the difference between them, mm-hmm. um, like no, again, no one's no one's committing heresy when they accidentally um, exchange, you know, put mercy in where maybe they should put the word grace, <laughs> grace or vice yeah. versa. Um, but I think understanding the difference between them allows you to expand your understanding. So it's like you not only have amazing grace, Mm -hmm. but then you've also got this amazing mercy that we've been given to. So we've not just been given so much, but there's also been so much that's held back that we deserve, right? That God is saying, in my mercy, I'm not going to allow you to Mm -hmm. endure this. Uh, You know, so I think that was a really great distinction. And I think I heard a little bit of feedback from people not I think, I know, uh, from people that that was helpful. That then, mm-hmm. you know, there was like, you know, I hadn't actually thought about that or, or I hadn't thought about that for so long and that was such a great reminder. So I think that was good. And then I think really just pushing into the idea, um, again, it's a foundational message. And so reminding people that grace is not something you have to earn. Mm-hmm. And in fact, if you if you try to earn grace, it is no longer grace. Like you cannot earn the grace of God Mm -hmm. because if you earn the grace of God, it's just, it becomes a wage. Mm -hmm. You have worked. He has paid you according to that work. It's a paycheck. It's not grace. So I think bringing that back around and reminding like the grace of God is a gift to you. The mercy of God Mm -hmm. is a gift to you. You simply need to receive that. Uh, So I think that reminder was, was super huge. That really was. I think that, I remember the first time that I really had to wrestle with those two words and just defining them. I was actually on the missions field. I was leading a group. A te- I was leading a team of about forty-five teenagers, and we had a couple teenagers break some major rules, and they, you know, lost their free day through that. And one of the things that, like, when you're when you're on a mission trip and you only get one free day, and kids have lost the free day well one now that leader now the leaders mm-hmm. have also uh, that was lost. my first thought like like that <laughs> being you know you're now a youth, a youth minister yeah you're like you're like shoot now, who's the person that's gonna stay with us because you can't like right so uh I, we that's what you have volunteers for <laughs> hashtag we love our volunteers no. JK, JK. i had we had um i was a, my i had a co-leader and so we had split the day like i'll take them the first half you take them the second half kind of thing and he, my co-leader was out and he called me and he was like, all right, let's talk about grace and mercy. And he's like, let, and so he's like, like, how can we explain? Maybe we, we should teach grace and mercy to these kids right now. Like the difference between the two and then ask them if we were to give them half of their free day, which would we be extending to you, you know, and like have those, that conversation. And it really was, but it was something that it was for, for me mm-hmm. at the time, it was a moment to understand how grace is this like undeserved, like there's nothing in this, this unmerited mm-hmm. like act of, of God, like in this thing of like, let me give you something mm-hmm. that there's absolutely zero reasons why right. you deserve this. In fact, probably a lot of reasons why you shouldn't. Right. Yeah. Versus, you know, and then when you ta- we're, you're talking about mercy and it's like, I'm just going to hold back. Mm-hmm. what you really deserve yeah and so you know this is because which one am i and they're like well, you're giving us mercy right now i was like yes i am giving you mercy all the mercy <laughs> all in the, the mercy. world <laughs> <laughs> you better uh, believe it and they also had to walk the rest of the day with me like and i did all the shopping at small children at the time very small children so like they were going to all these like little things looking for toys and they were like chill i was like sorry guys <laughs> like, <laughs> like my kids better like what? these toys we, we better have a great day but no i think that both of these terms and we, I mean, I'm speaking to the camera. If you can't hear me or you're listening to the podcast, I'm speaking to your ears right now. Like, if you missed worship yesterday, mm-hmm. you missed an incredible, like, foundation being laid even for the message. Right. Every song we sang yesterday 
had the word grace in it. And mm-hmm. even even the last song I started, like grace and mer- how his grace and mercy unfolds was mm-hmm. one of the lines of the song. And I was like, I mean, music. Right. Like, well, that- and Mason had said something backstage to me that that was, I think, but that, that was chosen before he really knew that, like, what the sermon was about or, or the fullness of it the fullness of it right, right. absolutely yeah the, and the way that the the way that that set list came to be and everything just really helped one i, I honestly think that it helped give you a, a launching place mm-hmm. for for you know god knew that we were going to be in this situation um we might not have but it, mm-hmm. i think that it led it laid such an incredible foundation if you are not in the room that's actually like if you're not in the room for these things you are missing half mm-hmm of what God is doing in our midst. Which half of us weren't in the room because we were at home sick. Right. But, but <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but like if you are not in the room for like any right. of these yeah, sermons, yeah, yeah. And, like yeah. any of these messages, this is not the first time, especially I've noticed this even in the last few months, this being a reoccurring thing where the music has been setting up. Mm-hmm. And some, and yes, yeah, some of that can be intentional. We mm-hmm. will look at like obviously when Clayton preached a me- Pastor Clayton preached a message on communion and we did a song called communion. Okay, there was a little bit of intentionality to that. But, like, yeah. but there are often times mm. where, you know, you're seeing a song called Whole Heart that does not have the word grace in it. It's mm-hmm. not like, you know, Mesa's like, find all songs with the word grace in it. <laughs> title like, yeah. title gra- equals title grace. grace. <laughs> that, that's not happening. But yeah. the, the way that these things are going, that it, it lays this foundation to allow the Holy Spirit to come in. And hopefully, like through the rest of the week, you, you, the listener, you, people, us, like, mm-hmm. are having these opportunities to one, not only experience God's grace, but able to share God's grace, to able to share these moments of, hey, you're starting a new year, you're doing yeah. these things, and like, you're like struggling to try to make things meet because you're trying to meet all of these things. Let me tell you about something you don't have to meet. Mm-hmm. You know, like a gift that you don't have to like earn, work for, right. all those types of things. So, yeah. Well, and but I mean, speaking of speaking of things maybe left out of the message, uh, I think I I didn't completely leave out this idea, mm-hmm. but I think I, I probably would have if I were to go back and listen to it, I probably would have wanted to maybe lean in a little bit more into the new year. What is this? What does this mean for this year? I, I kind of touched on it, but I think there there was probably a way to, to lean into that a little bit more and press a little bit more on that of like, of like, hey, 2019 was a hard year for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And whether it was it was just it was just life happening and you know, you know, or if it was it was a matter of like your choices have led you to whatever this is, you know, whatever that is. Right. Um like 2020 like there's there's a new season there's a new mercies every morning new graces every morning so like press into that don't let the 2019 or don't let where you've been don't let the failings don't let the mess ups keep Mm -hmm. you from from and really living the 2020 that god is calling you to like what is it this year that god is is calling you to do continued in his grace Mm -hmm. not in your own power in his mercy as well but what is he so I i think there was a I could have maybe stressed that a little bit more, mm-hmm. but could. yeah, I think that there was there's opportunity there. I think that you, I don't know, are you are you a like word of the year kind of guy? Like, do you do those? Do you like, like no, not like from. I don't really normally have like one for myself. Or res, do you do resolutions? I so I kind of do. This year I have one. Okay. I do have a resolution this year, um, but that's like that's just. I would say probably half of the time I've been alive, I've maybe had a little, <laughs> maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe a little. Um, bit. It's maybe not don't count the first ten years of well, your life. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, but you, like you count those. Yeah. So since then, half. Um, but it's it's not super uh, intentional. But I do have one this year, mm-hmm. um, and it's to read twenty books. Okay. So across the whole year. Twenty twenty. Yeah, that's why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> You're so intentional, why. <laughs> so intentional about that. <laughs> how many books do you normally read in a year? Now you've got, you've got well, well, books. We'll be like, well, so how long do we have on this the podcast? Is, it oh, doesn't right, matter. Okay, Who bye. cares? Well, we do still have five minutes. Um, are these, is this count, uh, counting the books that we have to read for, for staff? Or? <laughs> um, um, yes, you can count well, those. Plus, how many books do you normally okay, read in a year, plus including that, books you're required to for work? I would say maybe like eight to nine. So, which we probably do like five, 
five or six for okay. staff. So there, yeah, maybe a few books outside of that. So um, I wanted to, to up that a little bit, but I also didn't want to get so. So I was at David Bolton was asking me too, and he was like, twenty books. How do you comprehend twenty books in a year? And I was like, well, honestly, that I was thinking about going higher, but I was like, twenty is probably enough. So um, you know, there I think there is a level at which you're like. Yeah, I read all these books, but I didn't get anything out of them because I was just so like. Duh, 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 duh. Uh, Sharon Watts, our admin here, asked me just a couple days ago. She's like, "How many books have you read in a year?" Were you talking to her about this, or maybe she's got? I don't know. She's talking about books that she read during the year, and I was like, "I think last year, last year's probably my lowest, like year of books." And it, I looked it back up, and it was like thirteen. Like I read thirteen books last year, and that was really low for me. Mm-hmm. I felt like I had just didn't have time to read last year. And so she's like, well, well how many to read 13 books? books so. She's like, how many books have you normally read? And I was like, well, there was a year where I set a goal for 50 books, mm-hmm. and I hit that goal. I was like, but I feel like that. And so I went back to look, and it really was. It was 2013. Uh, I had just transitioned from a job. I was volunteering. I was mm-hmm. just volunteering here at the church. The kids were homeschooling, so I was home a lot, and I was able to hit that that goal of 50 books in that year. Uh, but the were these new books? New books, That you've yeah. never read? Never read. New books. Uh, but... Then this, but look at she because she had said this to me made me go back to I was like what year was that I want to like I was like I told her it happened I was like I don't remember what year it was a while ago, so she I said I went back through and all of my thirteen books from last year only one of the thirteen was a fiction, mm-hmm. um, everything else was either work or growth related mm-hmm. which isn't a bad thing by any means but I love fiction I love to read so right. I did say I did I, when I went through that I told uh mike i was like i do want to read more fiction this mm-hmm. year i was like obviously i have like my time i need to learn to figure out how to adjust that time so there are, there are my family's leaving for a ski trip they're going skiing uh this this month and they're gonna be gone for five days and i don't know if anybody knows this but i don't like the cold and i really like what? i the thought of being out on a ski slope all day long <laughs> is like the very bottom of the list of things that i really want to do so i was like you guys go i'm good Five days here at home? I'll figure out something to do. I'm going to think about this because we I, we need to figure out a way for, to have Hoke brand a ski trip where the <laughs> where the <laughs> female spouses just stay home. Stay home. So it's basically next time invite next me time on the trip. Next time I might call it. I'll let them know. Um, but the, the I did tell Mike, I was like, okay, five days. How many books do you think I can read in the five days that you're gone? And he's like, that's what you're going to do with your time. I was like, it might be. And I'm like, you can't judge me. <laughs> I was like, no. So do you have a number? I, I, I think I can, I think in five, oh, well, in five days I can get through six books. So more, more than one book a day average. Oh, easy. If, if, if I do nothing but read. Now that is fair. Do you if have I like children's read. books at home that you're like, No, I just am like, a fast red reader. Fit, one, one yeah, fish, I don't, two I, fish. I, I, I've just been reading for so mm-hmm. long and it kind of drives my husband a little bit crazy because he's like, you don't retain anything that you read. I was like, yeah, I really do. And he, then he'll be like, well, what? You know, he'll read something. Like, and he'll be like, okay, what's this all about? I was like, oh, well, this chapter, it was blah, 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 blah. And he's like, how did you do that? I was like, I don't know. Like, okay, it's just enough. the way that yeah. like God wired me. Yeah. I, I get, I don't get it. But I'm like, I could easily in five mm-hmm. days, I could easily finish out six books. But I'm not going to do six. Okay. I, I will be happy if I can get through two in five days. Right. Uh, simply because one of them fiction. One of them fiction. One of them nonfiction. And I already have them. I got them for Christmas. They're sitting on my nightstand. Uh, the uh, the oh, what's the library book? Hannah and Mike got it for me for Christmas. One's called the library book. That's my. Oh, it's called the library. It's book. called the library book. And that's my nonfiction, or that's my fiction. And then my nonfiction is uh, there's two of them on the desk, and I can't remember the name of the one. Something about conversations. It's anyway, it's a really good looking book that Mike got me. So those are my two for that week. So Sweet. what's your first book? I've actually already finished my first book. Oh, look at you! It's what? Just saying. Six, seven days in. Where yeah, are we at? six. Seven days eight, in. Seven. Yeah, the seven. Seven days in. One whole week, and I, well, I, but I finished this. I finished it like day three. Oh, what'd you read? Um, it was now. You've probably read it before, but it's how full is your bucket? Oh, that's a good. The yeah. But half of that book it's is pictures. Well, it, it is pictures, <laughs> and there's like full pages that have just like a square and like a quote yeah. on it or whatever. Um, but the other, but their half of it is like kind of like practical. The how appendix. do you do this? So I didn't yeah. count that. So, okay. but. I'm yeah, calling it. I've read a book. Hey, do it. So that was so that, and then right now I'm reading Sticky Faith, which is a book I've had. It was by Doctor uh, 
I don't think Chap I Clark one. and Kara Powell. It's really how do we how do we help our students develop a sticky? Fa- how, well, I think it's from a parenting perspective, but it helps mm-hmm. f- as a youth minister. Um, how do how do you help your students develop a sticky, sticky faith, faith that that lasts? It's not just in high school, but like actually lasts them their whole life. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. So, so are all twenty of your books nonfiction, or do you have some fiction in there too? I'm gonna have some fiction. Here's like if you know me. It's no surprise to you that I don't have all twenty books picked out I, right I, now. Absolutely, I, um, I, I'm just wondering where your in fact, goals. In fact, I you're don't at. even have a clear like next book. Yeah, the next book is not <laughs> like a I, sure if thing. Had, if you had a book planned after the one you're reading right now, I would have been shocked. So, but well, what I told someone else is that like I've got so many books at like we ha- we have a, a wonderful library, mm-hmm. but m- it's so much of it I have not read. Right. So we had to we had to buy two IKEA bookshelves to mm-hmm. hold all of our books because Paige also loves to read. Yep. Um, so I mean we've got a lot of options. So a lot of them are going to be what we have. But yes, I'm definitely going to sprinkle in some fiction in there, and and you know because again that breaks it up so that you actually do, are able to to soak in and comprehend the the books that you really need to like grow and develop mm-hmm. that helps you and then it also breaks up makes it a little bit fun so. i don't even remember how we got on to the topic of books you just started talking books and i was like you... oh let's do this <laughs> this is fun <laughs> what my, yeah. well, my energy my level is when my, how. oh my when i get my my investment tracker and i go to the energy level plus i was like three. we talk books plus 20 <laughs> like can we do this more often no. i do think that um Oh, yeah, I was asking about your resolution because in your message and your talking, like, you could push into that. I am not somebody who ever, like, has a word of the year or has a resolution. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people, I'm like, if you want to change, start now. Why are you waiting until the beginning right. of the year? Like, what is the beginning <laughs> yeah. of the year going to do you? Um, I've been told that be I'm better. a little bit of a challenger and that I need to just, like, I just tell people to do it now. And I don't know. My husband but you know what Enneagram number very, that is. I'm ignoring that. Um, I made a very bad, fatal error. Eight, by very, the way, is what it very is. Very fatal mistake last night. Mike said something about me being argumentative. <laughs> And I went, you are the only person who thinks I'm argumentative. And the back seat of my car started laughing. <laughs> and I was like, wait a Listen. second. Apparently well, it's a, a good thing that the entire church staff was not in the car at the time because <laughs> everybody would have left. But I say that to say the idea of I don't think that we do need to wait until the beginning of the year. And I think that when you were saying like you could push into if 2019 was a rough mm-hmm. year for you, like what you were saying about what you left out, I think that that is something that I don't care when you're listening to this podcast. Mm-hmm. I would love for you to go, oh, I can make a change. I can adjust right. that now. I can do this now. I can um, I can experience the yeah. grace and the mercy. Seven in days things. in, I already screwed up my resolution. Okay, start yes. again. Yes. There is grace. Like there, right. grace is right. a thing. And be able yeah. to do that. But that was the roundabout way of getting there because we had to talk through books first and then we come back around. But that's the podcast with Chael and Colin. We, we did it. We did, we, we did we bring it back it. around eventually. So anyways, it was awesome to have you both on the podcast and to have you preach on Sunday. Thank you so much for taking the phone call at 830 on a Saturday night and not going. I, it rang a few yeah. times. It did ring a few times. I was it rang like, for a while. Now, to be fair, that was not because I was like, should I? answer i was i think oh, we were no we were watching we still haven't finished yet we were watching episode one of star wars so we we're like uh, okay. let's just go back and watch them and so i was in uh i think i was in the other room doing something for a moment and i got it so i had to like run out pause it real quick so uh, there you go. Anyway. i was like i was like it did ring a little bit I was a little, <laughs> and you're not the only person like Pastor Clayton has said this too. If I call him, he's like, "What?" He lands the phone. He's oh, like, yeah. "What's wrong?" And I'm well, like, "Well, we're all texters." Uh, right. We all we Slack or we text. Mm-hmm. We don't pick up a phone. And that's where like I might sit on that line of Gen X and Millennial. I'm totally a Millennial when it comes to communication <laughs> oh, sure. like that. I'm like, let me send a text or an email. Don't make me get on the phone with you. Yeah. Um, that's fair. It's totally fair. And I'm pretty sure like even when you said it in the message, my best friend was sitting one row behind me and over and she laughed like, like she does the same thing she's she's been my best friend for 20 right, years yeah, yeah. and she still sees my number my name come up on a phone and is like oh, no. uh is everything okay <laughs> like so it's not it's not a bad thing it's not total fear uh but the i appreciate you just taking that call and stepping in you did a great job of course you can follow us along in social media all mm-hmm. week long all throughout the months all things to hear everything happening with brand new episodes instagram at Trinity New Life. And you can ask questions. Any follow-ups for Colin? You want to know more about this amazing grace? If you have questions, thoughts, opinions, all of those things, podcast at trinitynewlife.com. Have a great week, everyone. See you guys. Bye.